This week we look at solar power as one of the many sources of self-sustainability when RVing. Also, making plans for some RV trips this spring and summer? We'll show you a great destination in the high Sierras. And Jeff gives us some inspection tips you should consider on your next RV adventure. These stories and more on this episode of Rolling On. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. You don't have to be an extreme RVer living off the grid for weeks at a time to take advantage of available alternative power sources. And one of the most popular is the addition of solar panels. Today, solar panels come in all shapes and sizes and you can get a system to handle virtually any of your RV's power needs. To learn more, Jeff Johnston visits AM Solar and finds out all about RV solar systems. If you enjoy camping without hookups or boondocking when you're out with your RV, a battery charging solar panel system is a terrific accessory for improving your RV fun time. A solar panel system uses the sun to charge your 12 volt batteries during the day so you have more power at night and that means you can stay out longer without hookups. Solar charging systems have been around for years and are used on all kinds of RVs from small trailers up to the biggest motorhomes. AM Solar of Springfield, Oregon is a company that specializes in supplying RVers solar charging needs. We spent some time with company owner Greg Holder to learn more about solar charging and his company. AM Solar specializes in uh, RV solar battery charging systems, which includes inverters and batteries and battery monitors, as well as uh, solar panels and solar charge controllers. We ship out mail order and phone order uh, systems to, to customers and we have two bays where we can bring in RVs and do the actual installations of this equipment. We've had pop-up trailers come in, we've had very small pickup campers and towables, we've had giant fifth wheels, uh, all the Class C's and Class A motorhomes, we've done something with every available type of of uh, RV out there. What's the most important detail that sets AM Solar apart from its competitors? I do a lot of research on what happens, but since I do live with the systems too, and our RV and travel for extended periods of time boondocking, we find the shortcomings. And so we're constantly evolving new controllers, new wiring schemes, new ways of putting things together to cover the inefficiencies we find in actual use. You know, we do approach this as a lifestyle with personal experience and not just having a product to sell that we know nothing about just for being a salesman. You know? So we, we live it, we use it, we teach it, we build it, we install it, you have a certain level of integrated, <laughs> you know, everything comes together and works quite well. That's what I want as an end user. So I'm building for myself and everyone else gets the benefit of that. <laughs> we asked Greg, what's one of the biggest user misconceptions about solar charging systems? One of the most common questions is, can I run my air conditioner off of your solar panel? And the answer is no. Okay, <laughs> and, and you're, you're mixing things up. Solar is a battery charger. The batteries are the core of your system. It's totally impractical. It's yeah. not impossible. I've done it, okay? You might get out of four golf cart batteries through an inverter if your air conditioner was running off of the inverter you might get anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes for the run time, then you have a dead battery bank, and then what do you do? 
there's a solar charging system price range to fit almost everyone's budget. Okay, this is our range of panels here. This is our most efficient 100 watt. This is also 100 watts, it's a different technology. This is 150 watts, and this is 260 watts. And depending on your needs and the available space on your roof, we pick and choose which ones are most appropriate for each customer. We have 600 watts of solar up on our roof powering this display so that our customers can get a live working example of the different systems we offer. From the front office to the installation crew, the company is staffed by trained specialists who know how to do the job right. A comfortable waiting room is available for customers having work done at AM Solar. Customer dogs are welcome too. And when you're here for service, we can, and you bring your dog with you, we can uh, set you up here in our customer waiting room and just slide this across and let you have your dog in the waiting room with a, a door to the outside. The AM Solar Crew was just starting a solar array installation during our visit. We'll show you the details of this typical RV install project right after this commercial break, so stay tuned. It all starts with pride. And ends up being the gold standard in pop-up truck campers. Four-wheel campers. Need we say more? See for yourself by visiting fourwheelcampers.com. Is your pop-up camper canvas getting a little worse for wear? Don't fret. Just call the friendly folks at Canvas Replacements, and their experienced staff will cut and sew you up a new one in no time. Canvas Replacements, your number one source for all your pop-up camper canvas needs. For more information, visit the company website at canvasreplacements.com or call them at 800-232-2079. Welcome back to our visit with AM Solar. Planning and installing a solar charging system takes know-how and the right components. In our bay here, we're uh, working on a 36-foot four-travel Class A motorhome. These particular customers are wanting uh, 1,000 watts of solar. And we're upgrading their inverter and we're uh, replacing their batteries with a larger maintenance-free battery bank. We're putting 10 100 watt panels on the roof, uh, an inverter in a bay, and we're removing two batteries and adding eight. Inside will be the monitors, uh, remotes if you will, for the control of the inverter and the solar charging and battery um, monitor. Once the customer's power needs are evaluated and the hardware is selected, the crew dives in with the installation. Half the battle is finding space on the roof for all the solar panels. AM Solar Technician Alden test positions the panels in place and ensures a still walking and service access for rooftop hardware. Top grade fasteners are used throughout the project, including mounting the solar panels on the RV roof. Greg emphasized the importance of choosing the right storage batteries for the job as an important part of arriving at a successful solar battery charging setup. This rig came in with two of these 8D gel cell batteries, which are roughly 250 amp hours a piece for a total of 500 amp hours of battery storage at 12 volts. And we're replacing it with eight of these uh, Lifeline AGMs, which would give us 880 amp hours of battery storage at 12 volts. So uh, they're increasing their battery bank almost double. These folks chose to go with the AGM or absorb glass mat type of battery. Um, these have 
zero maintenance, meaning you're not leaking out fluids, corroding terminals or anything, uh, no water to add, anything like that. Uh, it's also very efficient at accepting a charge and has a very low self-discharge rate. Gel cells are roughly equivalent, but they have a very exacting charging regimen, which in an RV where you have alternators charging, solar charging, uh, perhaps an inverter charger, you have multiple ways to charge batteries and all their set points have to be set pretty tightly for gels. AGMs are a little more forgiving and so uh, can handle overcharges from time to time, whereas this one can't. So this is a a step up as far as efficiency and zero maintenance. This is the solar charge controller and the display for it uh, gets your information right here as one option. There is another option where this can be in with the meters. This is the disconnect switch between the solar panels and the controller which is uh, basically a code required item. The controller uh, just does not need to be in the living quarters, so it gets put down in the bay in an out-of-the-way position, but is yet accessible when you open the door. One of the jobs we need to uh, do is figure out where the customer wants to put the remotes or the monitors that go with the equipment in the bays. Uh, this surface was one of the po possibilities but the customer wanted it elsewhere and it just so happened to work out nicely that the manufacturer put in this little uh, recessed cubby and we were able to fit the inverter remote and the battery monitor in here uh, and that made wiring easier also. We're also kind of curious to know, what maintenance do you need to do with the solar battery charging system? Keeping the glass on the solar panel clean so the sunlight can actually get to the cells underneath the glass is your primary chore. If you have flooded batteries, then you need to keep the terminals clean of corrosion and check the water now. Controllers are all solid state electronics and require no maintenance at all. So simply keep the panels clean and keep your batteries watered and that's the maintenance on the system. A solar battery charging system can boost your boondocking time and make your camping more comfortable. From solar battery charging system design and installation to service after the sale, AM Solar is your right place to go. For more information about AM Solar, log on to our website at rollinontv.com. Coming up after the break, we'll show you a perfect RV destination located in the California High Sierras. We'll be right back. Exciting great things do come in small packages, like exceptional quality, extreme comfort, and luxurious appointments. You'll find all this and more wrapped up in one beautiful package, the Pleasureway Pursuit. See for yourself by visiting PleasureWay.com. Weight distribution comes out of the Stone Age. Steel on steel friction is 50 years old. The Sway Pro makes other weight distributing hitches seem, well, prehistoric. The Sway Pro features a softer ride, built-in optimized sway prevention, quiet backing and turning, and little maintenance. Finally, intelligent engineering gives you a much better way to prevent sway and smooth your ride. Why trust an amateur when you can go with a pro? Sway Pro. In California's High Sierra Mountains, on Highway 88, just 50 miles east of the historic mining community of Jackson, there's a fantastic place that's a special spot to stay in your RV. Silver Lake Campground lies at 7,200 feet elevation in the El Dorado National Forest. This is high altitude mountain camping at its finest. A snowpack closes the facility much of the year, but it's generally open from June through October. Inquire with the campground's website or phone number for specific schedule information. 
The park has excellent paved roads that access its 48 non-hookup spaces. A few of those sites can accommodate RV lash-ups up to 35 feet in total length. Many of the sites are smaller and best selected for more compact RVs, such as truck campers or other modest-sized rigs. Oster Creek flows through the site and forms a scenic pond that's a popular spot with waterfowl and other critters. Kit Carson Lodge is adjacent to the campground and includes a small general store, an art gallery, and a restaurant for a break from cooking your own dinner. The lake is a short walk from the campground via easy-to-navigate trails. Silver Lake covers 200 acres and is flanked by granite rock and a healthy evergreen forest. Clean air and deep blue skies complement the lake's clear water and spectacular surroundings. Daytime activities include boating, fishing, swimming, and hiking. For serious hikers, a wide variety of trails penetrate the surrounding hills and lead to remote lakes, meadows, and other natural features. You can haul along your own watercraft and launch it at the boat ramp, or rentals are available at the lodge. The boat rentals range from a one or two person kayak on up to a small fishing boat. Rainbow, German Brown, and Mackinac trout are stocked for your fishing pleasure. A friendly game of cornhole is another favorite campground activity. Summer days are warm at this elevation, but nights are cool and offer great sleeping weather. It gets chilly enough that the campfire feels really good after an active day in the sun. Silver Lake Campground is well worth a visit and may become your new favorite place to stay. For more information about Silver Lake Campground, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Whether your next trip takes you along the high Sierras or America's coastlines, safety should be the first and foremost thing on your mind. After the break, Jeff Johnston shows us some simple safety tips you should practice when you're out on the road. Whatever road you take, no matter what adventure you choose, equip yourself for the journey. Load up on family fun. Find your perfect RV. Visit your local Jayco dealership to get in on generations of family fun. Be sure and visit the new RollingOnTV.com where you'll find weekly shows along with a selection of videos, stories, information, and the latest RV news. Our lifestyle pages are full of great stories about places to go, things to do, and what's new. Written by our viewers and RV writers from around the country. And if you're into great food and drinks, then visit our food and beverage pages where we'll get your taste buds up and ready for an Epicurean adventure. All this and more on the new RollingOnTV.com. Anytime we're traveling, safety is a top priority. There's a little something that we do to make sure that nothing goes awry later on down the road. While we don't have a hard and fast checklist per se, all it amounts to is a simple inspection, a walk around of the vehicle. We count the parts more or less. Now you have to get out of the vehicle and stretch your legs anyway, so as you're stretching your legs on your way to the restroom, for example, stop in, take a look at all your hardware that you need to, and you can make sure things are going okay with the rest of the vehicle. We'll show you what we do. Stop number one is your tow vehicle's tires. Now it's a little hard to tell with today's modern radial tires if a tire is low pressure or not because there's a little bit of a bulge on the bottom of a radial anyway. But you can stop, take a look, give them a thump, make sure that they're up to pressure, check them with your tire gauge, and just give a quick visual inspection of all the lug nuts and make sure it doesn't look like anything is wearing loose. 
Next stop, and I don't suppose there's any need to tell you why this is important, is your equalizing hitch. Take a look at everything. Make sure that it looks like it did when you started out in the morning. Check the spring bars, make sure they still feel tight. Maybe your lock for the hitch. Chains are all where they ought to be. Plug is still in tight. Um, everything looks good here, but it doesn't hurt a bit to stop and take a minute to just check the parts. You know, it's such an easy thing to do and it can save you huge grief down the road. Next up are your tires and wheels. Look for low inflation pressure, check for any signs of damage. Hold your hands kind of near the hubs to feel how warm they are. If you're real careful to avoid being burned, touch the wheel or hub gently to find out if they're all running about the same temperature. If one of the hubs feels really warm compared to the others, it could mean that the bearings are going bad and that could call for a stop at a service center at your nearest convenience. For this part of the walk around, a digital infrared thermometer comes in really handy. These are inexpensive, they can cost about $50 or less. This is a Fluke Model 62, it costs about 80 bucks. It includes a dig digital readout of temperature and it has a laser pointer to show you exactly where you're measuring the temperature. You aim it at the surface you want to measure and you instantly get a precise readout of the temperature. Now, this particular style of wheel has a space in between the spokes that allows direct access to the brake drums. And that allows you to take your digital thermometer and take a reading directly off the brake drum to see how the temperature is running. Brake drums are another indicator of the health of your chassis. If one of the drums is significantly cooler than the others, it could mean that brake is not being applied. At the same time, if one drum is really hotter than the others, that could mean that that brake is dragging and either situation calls for a stop at a service center. While you're walking around your RV, check these guys out. Make sure that they're securely tight. How often have you been going down the freeway and you've seen these things flapping open in the wind, maybe with a sewer hose or extension cord or something hanging out and banging all over the place? You don't really need that. Next item, you come around back, to take a quick look at both of your tail lights and make sure that nothing has happened to them breaking out or anything. And is this guy tight? More or less. You know, it's really amazing how many RV manufacturers consider a spare tire an option on an RV. It kind of blows our minds sometimes. Wheels on this side are okay. Just take a look around. If there's anything you can see that's a moving part, that's what you ought to consider. Make sure that the awning is in tight. All these little compartment doors need to be shut. Entry door, it's good and tight. Steps are folded up where they ought to be. Awning on this side looks like it's tight. And the compartment is tight. It really doesn't take long to walk around the rig as you stop and just give all the stuff a check. A couple of minutes is what you'll spend and you'll save yourself a lot of hassle later on down the road and give yourself a safer trip. With your inspection out of the way, you can hit the road with confidence. For more information on anything you saw on this week's show, along with additional videos and stories, visit our website at rollingontv.com. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com. If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org.